Can you hear me? <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Nick. Hola, Nick! Just wanted to take a few minutes to let you fine folks know how you can contact us. You can find us on Twitter at the It's Too Wordy One and on Instagram. Just look for It's Too Wordy. We also have a Discord set up, The Haunted Log. If you like what you hear, maybe considering throwing us some of your spare change. Maybe some of your hard earned loot. Maybe some stuff you find in your car cushions. Who knows? Anything will go a long way. And you can do that by visiting our Patreon page at Patreon backslash House BTS. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Welcome to the Haunted Log Old Time Radio Midnight Theater Presents The Fantastic Four, a short-lived radio play from 1975 starring Bob Maxwell as Reed Richards, Cynthia Adler as Susan Storm, Jim Pappas as Benjamin Grimm, Bill Murray, yeah, that Bill Murray, as Johnny Storm, and Stan Lee as the narrator. Tonight's episode, The Coming of the Submariner. And I'm joined by... Kirk. Ryan. From the It's Too Wordy podcast, and we're going to come back after the episode's done and do a little review of this episode. All right, guys, sit back and enjoy. Attention, all true believers. Marvel Comics is on the air. Out of the pages of the world's greatest comic magazine come the adventures of the Fantastic Four. This week's story revolves around a menace from the sea, and we'll begin our shanty in just half a moment. Our story this week picks up where we left off last week. The Fantastic Four have returned to their headquarters in the Baxter Building after Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, had defeated the Miracle Man. I'm sure it'll all come back to you as we proceed. Somewhere out there among the teeming millions of New York City, Torch is hiding from us. We've got to find him. But he can stay hidden for all I care. He's nothing but a spoiled teenage brat anyway. How can you talk about my brother that way? He saved us from the Miracle Man. And he may be out there hurt or in trouble. Oh, I'm sure Johnny's all right, Sue. As for you, Ben, it's all your fault that he ran off in the first place. Oh, sure, sure. Everything around here is my fault. It is your fault, Ben. Johnny ran after the Miracle Man single-handedly. And single-handedly, he defeated him. And thanks to the torch, the atomic cannon was returned safely to the army. And everyone was happy about it. Everyone except you. You were jealous of Johnny's achievements, so you picked an argument with him. Your bickering made him leave us. I'm through with you, you big bully. And I'm through with the Fantastic Four. Understand? Through. Well, we're going to find that youngster. And that means you too, Ben. And when I find him, I'll teach him to run out on us like that. Oh, Reeve, darling. If he harms my little brother. And so the Fantastic Four, minus one, set out in their fantastic car to search the megalopolis. You check the village where you and Johnny grew up. Okay, Reed. Ben, you cruise the west side and check garages. And what are you going to be doing, Reed, darling? Oh, Ben, give me a break. Okay, this is where we separate. Release sections. Thus, the long search begins. Susan Storm lands in the center of town. Johnny loves this neighborhood. There are so many people his age. Here's a good place to start searching on a hot day. The soda fountain where Johnny hangs out. And there's one of his pals. Uh, excuse me. Huh? Have you seen my brother, Johnny Storm? What? what? I must be hallucinating. Some funny-sounding chick's voice out of thin air. Wait a minute. If you're hallucinating, then I'm hallucinating. And I'm getting out of here. I never understood why he hangs out here. These kids sure scare easy. Oh, well, back to the search. <laughs> back to the search indeed. We find Mr. Fantastic in Central Park, near the bike trails. There are some cyclists. Maybe they've seen Johnny. I'll just wait to hear What? Mr. Fantastic. Hey, I didn't know you were for real. I'm real enough. But tell me quick. Have you seen Johnny Storm the Torch? No, man, I haven't. Hey, see, how do you stretch your No body time to chat right now. That. Sooner or later, I'll find someone who's seen him. But little does Mr. Fantastic know that less than a mile away in Swanson's garage... Nobody can modify an engine like you, man. Yeah, that's incredible. You're only saying that because it's true. You know, the whole country is looking for the human torch. Yeah. And he's right here working with us on cars. <laughs> well, I've got to do a little welding, guys, so step back for a few seconds. 
Flame on. Hey, John, I didn't know you could ignite parts of your body. The flame from my finger beats a welding torch any day. It's really nifty. Every time I use my flame, I learn new things I can do with it. By concentrating, I can keep it away from that gasoline. But if I wanted to, I could merge my flame with that barrel of oil and keep this place heated for months at almost no cost. Wow. Reed and I have done a series of tests. But as Johnny explains his superhuman abilities, one of his ex-teammates is right outside, preparing to demonstrate his... Before I let myself out searching this whole city for that squirt, I'll play a bunch. The thing, right, Max Stick? And now I'm going to show you what we do to deserters. You can't beat the torch thing. He's too hot for you. That flame doesn't scare me. There's gasoline all over here. One spark and your pals will be statistics. I'm getting out of here before I'm blown up. Flame off, torch. Flame off or I'll drop this jalopy right on you and we'll all be blown to bits. Drop the car thing. Sure, I'll drop the car. And now I'll take care of you. You've always laughed at me because I'm ugly. So why aren't you laughing now, punk? Lay off, thing. I'm warning you. Don't worry, sonny boy. I won't spoil your pretty face. I'm just going to rough you up a little so you won't forget who's boss around here. Knock it off, thing. I'm not going to warn you again. Warn me? I'm telling you, I'm going to... I'm Play mine. Go ahead and fly away, you flame and freak of a man again. The poor fool is just a temporary change. He'll soon be the thing again. His is the cruelest cosmic power of all. as Ben Grimm reverts to his cosmically altered form, Johnny Storm reaches his chosen place of seclusion in the Bowery. No one will find me down here. I'll just lose myself among all these human derelicts. I better get off the streets. That flop house over there looks as good as any. Two bits a night, buddy. In advance. Well, Johnny wanted the anonymity of the Bowery. And for his two bits, he shared a room with 15 other men, all similarly inclined. Well, it ain't the Waldorf, but I'll be safe here while I plan my next move. Hey, pal, could I see that comic book over there? Sure, Mac. Here you go. Submariner. I remember someone talking about him. He was the world's most unusual character. He lived underwater and was as strong as ten men. I wonder what happened to him. He was supposed to be immortal. You know about Submariner? What? Oh, yeah. You got a bum over here who's as strong as that guy's supposed to be. Yeah? yeah. Hey, old man. Wake up. Oh, oh, you may be. Come on, old man. <laughs> you got a lieutenant here. <laughs> Show what you can do. Oh, well, I want to sleep. Well, I'll leave the old man alone. He's probably tired. Well, he's never too tired for this. Come on, you mangy bum. Get his phone book in here. Go oh, away, your puny frame. Let's teach him a lesson, boys. Get him. I've been spoiling for a good fight. I said... Go away, all of you. I'm tired of showing my strength. I just want to remember who I am. What I am. I've spent so many years here in this fog, my mind's a blank. Look. This guard is down. How's our chance? Yeah, I never like to creep anyway. Hold it. Leave him alone. Can't you see he's sick? He's got amnesia, loss of memory. He doesn't even know who he is. Yeah, but well, we'll be the bad you know. Wait a second. I've got an easier way. First, let's show him what he really looks like. Let's give him a hot shave. Flame on. Hey, what's that? You've got to be the human torch. <laughs> I can control my torch flame to within a hair's width. Look at his face. It can't be. It is. It's submariner. At the same moment that Johnny Storm makes his incredible discovery, the other members of the Fantastic Four are continuing their search for him. Have you fellas seen a flaming teenager flying around the city? All the sports I've read about you guys, but I never dreamt that you really existed. They exist, all right. Now, how about it? Have you seen the torch? Ah, uh, no. Well, if you do, contact the Fantastic Four. Susan Storm, too, prowls the vast metropolis as the Invisible Girl. 
I traveled all the way down to the salary. A regular for my soul. I can't believe it. I find Johnny here. Come on, pal. If you are a submariner, I know one thing that will bring back your memory for sure. If you can, I'll be forever in your debt. I'm wasting precious time. I'll continue down and look for Johnny in Canada. And once more, destiny dabbles with the fate of humans. Susan Storm, less than ten feet from her brother, turns and walks away, not seeing the subject of her search. Okay, the coast is clear. Flame on! No, oh, you're a demon! It's okay, you're safe from my flame. We're just going for a little flight test. See? There's the Atlantic Ocean. But, but you... Easy, pal, I won't drop you. Not yet. If he is submariner, Steve will bring back his memory. If not, I'll dive in and save him. No! Once submerged in the mighty Atlantic, a startling change comes over the derelict. In one sweeping motion, he removes his outer garments and stands revealed as the legendary ruler of the sea, the invincible Prince Namor, the Submariner. I remember who I am now. I must return to my family, my friends, to my undersea kingdom. Once again traveling in his native element like a rocketing torpedo, Prince Namor soon reaches his almost forgotten land, only to find... Destroyed. It's all been destroyed. Oh, what's that glow in the water there? It must be radioactivity. Now I know what happened to my world. The selfish humans poisoned our water with their atomic tests. My people, though not harmed by the radiation, must have moved elsewhere dispersed when this part of the undersea environment was no longer inhabitable. The oceans are vast, nearly endless. How can I ever find them? Where shall I begin to look? And moments later, Johnny is standing at the pier. You're back. You are Submariner. I'm so glad you're safe. Do not be proud of what you've done. By returning my memory, you have signed the death warrant for the whole human race. W what are you talking about? I'm talking about a revenge. The revenge I shall have for the destruction of my undersea kingdom. I am a Prince Namor, the Submariner. And now you shall fear my strength as it is turned against you. And so speaking, Submariner submerges, leaving Johnny Storm alone. I better warn the others. My grudge with Ben is insignificant compared to the threat from Submariner. Seconds later, the other three members of the super team see the Fantastic Four emergency flare in the sky. Look! It must be a signal from Johnny. It's coming from the piers by the river. Why can't that rat stay out of trouble? Faster, Reed, faster. He must be in danger. Easy, Sue. We're almost there. There he is. I got eyes. I can see him. What's the idea of shooting off that flare? You're only supposed to use it in emergencies. This is an emergency, you big ape. What'd you call me? Wyatt, Ben. What is it, Johnny? Well, we're going to need each other now. Submariner is back, and I just wanted to tell Submariner? You. I thought he died long ago. Well, he's alive, all right. And from what I've seen, he's more dangerous than ever. Bah, who's worried? Nothing human can stand up to the thing. That's just it, big boy. He ain't human. Prince Namor of the sea isn't quite human. His race was old when our son was young, and he knows well the secrets of the deep. I shall unleash a monster upon mankind, the likes of which they have never even dreamed. Ah, there he is, slumbering still, as he has done for ages. The largest living creature in all the world. A deadly, giganto. His slumber can only be interrupted by his trumpet shell, which my ancestors buried here centuries ago. Come, Giganto, it is time. Ah, it's working. I have awakened the monster. Now nothing can stop him. He will follow the trumpet shell wherever it reads. And in the hands of the vengeful submariner, the trumpet shell leads Giganto to the surface world. 
Look, Captain, off the port bow. Why do you make that? Oh, Martin, adios. It is huge. It is right for us, sir. To the left, boss, man. He's going to hurt his ship. A giant sea belly that splinters the tiny tramp steamer as the crew barely manages to escape to sound the alarm. And within minutes, for the first time in history, the order is given to evacuate New York City. Don't panic! Everybody just keep moving! We've got plenty of time! Everyone will get out safely! Keep moving! And through the now silent canyons of the huge city, the nation's most powerful weapons are brought into place, and the battle is at hand. Sector 2 reporting, sir. We can see the monster coming into New York Harbor. A monster is coming within range. Prepare to launch ground control missiles. Five seconds. Three seconds. Fire! Look at that. Those rockets didn't even slow the monster down. What will happen when it reaches the city? Hey, there's Reed. He's going after the monster with the fantastic car. Maybe this chemical smoke will confuse the creature. Slow it down before it reaches shore. The fantastic four are keeping Gigando Farmer reaching the city. Another brass on my horn will set him straight. <laughs> Something out of a nightmare, the hulking mountain of a monster slowly turns, following the sound of the trumpet shell, and the beast crashes into the city. He'll wreck the city if he's not stopped. It's like a giant whale. But it falls. Gives me an idea. Moving like a man possessed, the thing rushes to the military supply depot and returns. What's that bomb? Strapped to your back. Nuclear bomb. Oh, I, can't I can't believe, believe it. it. Relax, kids. I ain't no hero. I'll be back. You wait and see. And as night falls on an evacuated New York City, the lumbering thing with a timed nuclear bomb strapped to his back finds Giganto sleeping on Fifth Avenue. All I gotta do is slip through that joker's teeth and get inside, like in the Bible. Then I gotta get out again, before this little number goes off. Yeah, that's all. Well, here goes. This bomb is heavy. Boy, it sure is weird in here. I hope he doesn't wake up before I get out. Slowly, warily, knowing that each step might be his last, the thing walks deeper and deeper inside Giganto, the monster from the sea. Past remains of long-since forgotten vessels, victims of this enormous creature. This big guy could swallow sea monsters whole. Yeah. Yeah. Another one of them. Submariner's monster is dead. He saved the city, maybe even the world. The explosion blew him right out of the monster like he was shot from a cannon. I didn't think anything could stun the big ape. <laughs> I hate to admit this, Ben, but I'm proud of you. So what, Squirt? Let the die will get you. That horn. Soon the whole world will again know the Submariner. You haven't beaten me, and with the power of this horn, I shall summon countless others to attack you. I will have my revenge. So, it's the horn. What? I'll take that. It's floating in midair. That can't be. I'll find the answer. Oh, I thought so. A human, but an invisible human. Give up. 
You cannot win. And seeing the futility of her struggle, the invisible girl becomes Susan Storm, prisoner of the Submariner. Well, this is a prize worth catching. You are the rowdiest human I've ever seen. If you will be my bride, I will show mercy to the rest of your pitiful race. How can I make such a choice? You won't have to, Susan. We're here now, sis. But we're going to fix you, fish man. Fools! You are finished. Now I will have this girl and my revenge. The next time you hear this horn, I shall unleash millions of undersea monsters such as mankind has never seen. Helpless before the invincible attack, you shall be driven out of your cities and return to the caves from whence you came. Oh, you mustn't. I'll become your bride. You speak as though you are sacrificing yourself. You realize that I offer you the honor of becoming a princess Namora. Bride of a submariner, queen of the sea. This is going far enough. You're crazy. Let me at him. Let me at my hands on that scale-bellied fish. Back you fool. He's more powerful than we thought. This calls for a stunt only the human torch can do. Play on. After reaching an altitude of a thousand feet, the human torch begins circling in an expanding ring above the submariner creating at first a light wind and then building into a tornado of unimaginable force. So powerful and well-aimed is the vortex that Submariner forgets about Sue and devotes his energy to the whirling wind about him. This wind, I'm being sucked into it. The pressure is unbearable. It's pulling me off the ground. Torch's tornado hurls Submariner's helpless form higher and higher until finally he and his victim are over the deepest part of the vast Atlantic. Now this ought to put the world in proper perspective for you. The menacing sea trumpet slips from the hand of Prince Namor and is lost in the depths forever. Moments later, revived by the water's magic healing powers, Submariner reaffirms his vengeful vow. You humans may be strong, but not strong enough to defeat Namor. When I return, I will reduce you to cavemen. Yes, perhaps he will be back, but he will still have to face the most incredible quartet of humans in all the world. I don't think you should have let him return to the sea, Johnny. I got a hunch he's going to be back, and I can't wait. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it, Ben. When he returns, we'll be waiting. Be with us again on Monday when the Fantastic Four will encounter the diabolical doings of Dr. Doom. The fantastic cast is... Cynthia Adler. Bob Maxwell. Bill Murray. Jim Pappas. Gary Gerhyden. Narrated by Smile and Stan Lee. All right, so what did everybody think about this? It was okay. It, I was expecting a little bit more because it was the first appearance of Submariner in the Fantastic Four. But I did like it. So we all know now that Johnny Storm is responsible for bringing, the, bringing Namor back into the uh, Marvel Universe because he was amnesiac. Yep. Um, Living in the Bowery. Yeah. Yep. The only problem I have with this is when the, when Ben Grimm turns into, or from the thing, back into Ben Grimm. Yeah, yeah. That, that sound effect has is probably the worst one in the show. That's the worst one out of all of the sound effects that they use. But I did like how the thing was trying to uh, beat up on Johnny for deserting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's the reason why Johnny deserted in the first place. It's what we do to deserters. It's like, you pushed him away. This isn't Vietnam, Ben. Yep. This is not Vietnam. It's not military. It's not Vietnam. It's not nothing. <laughs> you know, I enjoyed the enjoyed this episode. Uh, Namor has always been a character that I really liked. And I remember reading some old Invader stuff, the old Defenders. Uh, I always pictured a or i had in my head a different voice for him you didn't want japanese italian that's what he sounded like to me was japanese italian see i, I get the italian thing 
um, he's he's from Atlantis, and Atlantis is part of Greek myth. Yep. So he's from that area. So yeah. he's going to have probably a Greek accent. But the guy who did it does stay. Does, yeah, he can't keep he it. He couldn't stay in his in his. Uh... So sometimes a little bit of Japanese will come out. Yeah. In this thing. I was like, oh my god, this is horrible. But I don't know. It it'll grow on you. The more you listen to it, it'll be. Yeah. I I didn't. I I liked it because I. We're, we're all we all like Neymar. We all want the movie. It's funny though that um, so Johnny leaves the Fantastic Four, goes to the Bowery to just cool off, goes to a crappy hotel, and finds Submariner comics along with the Submariner. And yep. it's like, hey, and I, here's this guy that's just as strong as that guy, and he trims his shaves yeah. his beard with his flame and causes everybody in the room to start gagging because of the burnt hair. <laughs> Because if, if Superman has to shave with his laser, with his uh, his eye beams in a mirror, can you imagine what it would take to burn off the Submariner's hair? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just how much flame and smoke would be produced by trying to shave the Submariner like, yeah. down? It's like, uh, that's going to be pretty disgusting. Especially as it hasn't been washed in... So this is the 60s. He probably hasn't been seen since 1950. So yep. we're thinking 10 years. 10 of years of just grime and dirt. dirt. New York piss all over. You yep. know? Yeah. See, that's one yeah. piece I wish they would have added to the radio program. Like every episode, five minutes of them doing some kind of training. So they actually figure out what they're, how they run their powers. It's like even reading the stuff today, if somebody develops a new power, all of a sudden I know how to do everything with this power. Yeah. Yep. You never see them struggle with the power at all. And to do something that's exact. So you want him to be like Cannonball where he has problems Oh, he, yeah, doing right turns with, while he's blasting. I think the only thing Johnny has a problem with is keeping himself lit. Yeah. For more than 15 minutes. But yeah, yeah I can uh, shave him down to a hair's width. How? How do you know how to do that? Oh, I can uh, imbue my flame into that tank of gas or a tank of oil and keep I this place do welding reed and i have been doing studies right. it's like when or, when do you have time you've yeah. been fighting mole man and mr magnificent and you know i think the it's thing always yeah. like, mr fantastic and johnny would be the two that would have to have the more i mean i can't imagine sue having a problem with like okay i'm invisible now i mean okay yeah you know kind and of the funny. thing's just the thing so because she can't turn things invisible yet. I or never, she can't have like move things either. I never thought of it this way, but do you think she was the invisible girl because women should be heard and not seen? Her dad wanted a boy. Because Ouch. of the time yeah. No, just because of the time frame. That's why they made her the invisible girl. What's <laughs> Or am I looking too deep into this? No, ever, I I see where you're coming from. I yeah. can see that easily. At, <laughs> in this point of you know, our lives. I could very easily see that from that time frame. So. Yeah. Have you ever watched the movie where they're trying to, like, uh, I stretched myself too thin, and I became the Mr. Fantastic. And Ben's just a lumbering hulk, so he became a thing. Well, actually, Ben is just ugly on the outside. That's why he became a thing. <laughs> and then Johnny's a hothead, and Sue is which, the mouse. Which Fantastic Four? I think that's the one with... Chris Evans. Chris as Evans as the torch. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't remember. I'm trying to block those movies out of my head. Did you watch the Roger Corman one? The one that just uh, came out no. recently. The original. The original, uh, like the eighties. <laughs> I might have when I was a kid once or twice. Oh, uh, yeah. I will say this: the the radio program has done a better job with the Fantastic Four than any movie company has. Yes. Yes. But they're reading right from the source material. That's true, but still. The only other thing that I had a problem with is I love Bill Murray. I think he's a funny guy. But we need a little more fire behind his flame ons. Yeah, flame on. Oh, flame on. Well, Johnny's cocky like that. I can see that. Flame on. I don't want to do this. Flame on. You know, I. It just. I, it. I, I, we were driving down the road. And Teresa's looking at me, and I'm just shaking my head. And she's like, what? I said, it has to be like, flame on! You know, it has to be like, like in the comic books, it's always in capital letters with the the, excl the exclamation bubble. You know, and he's, yeah, flame on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, 
And she was just laughing at me because I'm nitpicking at the show. She goes, nerd. But yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it. And this is the first time that um, we get to see Sue Storm follow up with somebody else. Yeah. Like, she mm-hmm. is... Okay, so you got Reed, you got skinny, nerdy guy, or you got King of Atlantis, ripped, giant, yep. <laughs> handsome motherfucker, yep. standing in front of you. Wings on his feet. Little loincloth on. And she's just like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I love that dynamic throughout the whole series. Yeah. That whole love triangle. Yep, and it up. played out in, what was it, The Death of Johnny Storm, the volume of that? Yep. Where she can fuck, she can make him pretty much do what she wants because he loves her so much. Yep. And when, when she, uh, she smacks him down when he's about to kill those people and she's just like, no, these are my people. And yep. <laughs> he's yep. like, Oh, Sue, I don't know if I loved you even more. <laughs> you know? yeah, he likes it that a woman was <laughs> treating him that way, yeah. I love it. I love him. Yeah. He's so great. He is great. We need an ass, we need a, a bigger asshole for, uh, King of Atlantis. Yeah. So. No, oh, I'm, I enjoyed it and I'm excited because next week's is, uh, Doctor Doom. Next week is my favorite show. Is Actually, it? it's my favorite issue of the Fantastic Four. Okay. I love, anything with Dr. Doom in it, so. I was reading it when I got the Marvel Masterworks, and I was just like, the other ones are okay. This one is just so weird. Yeah. And it It was just... with Doom. Yeah. It does have some time travel problems, but we'll go into that next week. Yeah, I'm excited. I might... I might listen to it a couple times. Just... And the guy that does the voice for Doom does a fantastic job. Does he do do a fantastic job on Doom? And the, uh... The way they sound like he's in a mask. Yeah. Is really cool. All right, guys. Talk to you guys next week. Yeah. See you guys.